I'm Kathleen Jeff. Um, welcome to another video. I'm just going to talk through this time because there's a lot to say, too much to write down, um, how I make my painting. So this is my inspiration. I took the photo of only a couple of days ago and these are the colours I'm using. You can pause it and take note of those later if you're planning on replicating this painting. So I'm doing minimal drawing here. You don't need a lot of drawing. I never sort of put a lot of branches or anything in. Just enough to know what's where. So here I'm mixing a sort of pale grey. You can see I've used spray to wet the paper. I just really want a, a sort of a light greyish colour in the sky really. I won't see much of that later anyway. It's up to you if you want to put that in. Now here I'm doing a mixed a mid sort of grey and um, green um, fairly pale um, because it's in the distance you don't want these dark colours to come forward too much because you want them to fade away into the distance um, I've done a slightly darker colour here just to indicate the the darker foliage in the distance it will dry lighter because it's fairly watery um, and I'm just um, indicating some suggestions of of other tree tree trunks and branches by using the side of that flat brush. Um, I'm mixing a leaf colour now, sort of mid green, to do splashes. Can you see when you flick onto um, damp paper, the the they spread, the splashes spread. So that's quite nice because it's quite subtle. I've moved down now to. Um, the bottom section, the ground, with that same mid-green colour. Um, just putting in some drifts, I suppose, of foliage, sort of undergrowth in the in the woods. So going slightly more concentrated wash in the foreground because I want the darker colours to come. Oh there I'm picking out the um happy accidents. Can you see on that horizon line? So it's where um, different drying washes um, go into each other and sometimes they're brilliant marks that you didn't anticipate at all. Here I'm putting a bluebell colour. I mix the mauve and the turquoise together which is a really lovely colour. Now I've remixed it with a little bit of just more mauve there just to get a variation on those colours um, and tones because it um, can be a bit flat or one colour and I'm just splashing now that green's still wet so you can see in the, the splashes is dispersing um, oh I forgot to mask the sky you don't want bluebells in your sky so remember to mask that and I'm mixing more of a brownie colour now to do the path so just getting that all the sort of ground in first before I put some structure in for trees and things. So I'm just mixing that path colour, I suppose. And I'm just going in with a dark green in the, in the ground on the ground because um, there's only that one sort of quite pale tone at the moment. So especially in the foreground, remember dark colours come forward, light colours recede. So you want the dark colours to be mainly at the bottom if you can. I've mixed a brown using the yellow, the mauve and a little bit of turquoise and then you can always darken it with some Payne's grey there. So I'm just going in, you want it not too watery because you want the, remember the less water is on your paint mix the more concentrated because you've got more pigment and less water so it's going to be darker, more vibrant colours. So it's not too watery for these because I did want them really dark. Now don't make the mistake that I did. Go all the way to the top with your um, branches because I um, rectify that later. Um, so here I've changed the brush. I've got a real stumpy brush and I've wet it and t take, dab the excess water off and I'm just taking that left side where the highlights, where the sun's shining on that left side of the branches I'm just lifting that off. Every time I'm doing a bit, I'm washing it again and dabbing it off because all that pigment is coming off in, onto the brush. So you, you need to wash it. 
So I'm just going in with some more darker greens. Now it's jumped on here because I forgot um, it hadn't stopped. It had stopped recording, hadn't realised. But basically, I've just put in shadows. Um, you can see in different colours the mauve and the dark greens. Now I've switched brushes again to a rigger brush this time. These are branches. Um, I'm just putting them really loosely. Can you see I'm holding the brush only about halfway up? You don't want to get too fiddly. So, um, oh, here is the rigger brush on its side, virtually flat. And it's, it's basically called using the side of the brush, or flat brush, uh, or dry brush, sorry. And all it's doing is really dry paint on picking out the texture of the paper. And you get some lovely effects. So I've used it on the path and on the, um, on the tree trunks there. You can use it in the foreground as well, if you want to. Um, so I'm just flicking that um, bluebell colour around again, just to build up the layers of it. I'm just mixing another dark green, just because I need some foliage putting in. Now the top's dry. You can see it's dry because a lot of the splashes are quite spotty and hard lined. So I'm just going to blur that in with a bit of um, a really pale wash, a bit of yellow, um, greeny yellow there. Just bringing in some of the foreground foliage. So this is where I'm bringing the branches up. They just look like they stop too short, really. Now I'm darkening the um, bottoms of the trunks here, um, and the because as uh, watercolour dries, it um, tends to fade a bit. Sometimes really annoying. So I always go back and add in darker areas with a stronger pigment, so less water in your mix and I'm just doing some grasses here for the foreground. Don't go too far back with your grasses, that's about as far as I go, that middle ground there, because you wouldn't see them in the distance, they'd just be a blur, um, like with the bluebells really, they just drifts in the distance. Uh, yeah, here's I'm using the side of the brush there to pick out a bit of relief. Now I've decided to add in a bit of um, yellowy green here, it's virtually all yellow, because there was that lovely colour up in the top, in the canopies of the trees, but not in the on the ground, so I wanted to dot that colour around, plus it, it's really complementary to the uh, purple on the bluebells, purpley blue. <laughs> so I'm just dotting in a bit more. Um, now here I'm mixing really yellowy um, bark colour just to fill in. I felt like the trees were a little bit lost. I wanted them to be a little bit more pronounced so I decided to do a, a sort of darker, a uh, lighter sorry, a uh, yellowy brown to highlight that. Just more splashes on the trees using a mid green just to get that the foliage. I mean there's some lovely green foliage this time of year in the spring and still the trees are still fairly wintry looking they're quite bare but you get that lovely pop of lime green. Now here I've used gouache, white gouache because it's opaque and I'm mixing it with a bit of mauve and turquoise and I'm just splashing it um, bringing some more of those bluebells right in the foreground there and I'm just going a slightly darker wash not wash, just colour. Um, you need the consistency fairly wet, but not too wet, so you lose the, the colour. So don't water it down too much. Um, and that's pretty much it. I hope you like it, and I hope you got a lot out of it, and or learnt a few tips and tricks. If you um, do like my videos and you want to see more, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching.